Hello, I'm Dr. Spence Taylor from the Greenville Hospital System University Medical Center, Greenville, South Carolina. And this is a Society for Vascular Surgery briefing on who should be referred to the vascular surgeon. Perhaps the most commonly asked question I receive from non-medical people is, how would I know that I needed to come see you, the vascular surgeon? Most folks usually believe that vascular surgeons take care of some aspect of the heart, or more commonly believe we remove varicose veins only for a living. Interestingly, many referring physicians also have trouble understanding who to refer to the vascular surgeon as well. I think that it's amazing to consider that as many as one out of four of uh, all patients over age 65 might harbor some form of peripheral vascular disease. I think the confusion in part rises from the fact that vascular surgery does not have a prolific medical counterpart. Patients, for example, with a neurologic problem are often referred to the primary care doctor, uh, neurologist, by the primary care doctor who in turn might refer the patient to a neurosurgeon. Patients with cancer, likewise, are often referred to the medical oncologist. The medical oncologist subsequently refers the patient to the oncologic surgeon. I think most primary care physicians see patients with peripheral vascular disease, realize that symptoms are not severe enough to warrant surgery, but are reluctant to send the patient to the vascular surgeon, assuming he cares only to see patients who are ready for the operating room. In reality, Vascular surgeons see, and I think prefer to see, patients early in their disease process. Many folks that we see hopefully will never come to surgery. It is typical for me to see 20 to 30 patients in an outpatient office and perhaps schedule maybe only one vascular operation during a day. The point is, it is important for the referring physician to understand that vascular surgeons manage both medical and surgical aspects of peripheral vascular disease, similar, I suppose, to otolaryngologists who manage medical and surgical ear, nose, and throat problems. So then, who should be referred? When I came to the upstate of South Carolina nearly 20 years ago and started our practice, I embraced a referral philosophy which casted a very broad net. I would rather see a patient suspected of having a vascular problem who does not actually have disease than to see a patient with vascular disease late in the game who may suffer due to delayed referral. Any patient with unexplained leg pain abnormal peripheral pulses, difficult to control hypertension, abnormal vascular labs, be it an arterial or venous study, and extremity wounds, all extremity wounds should be seen by a vascular surgeon. Of course, we see patients with varicose veins as well, but this actually is a small portion of most vascular surgeon's practices. Perhaps one of the areas that where care is most fragmented is in the care of the diabetic foot. Remember, the most common reason diabetics are admitted to the hospital today is to manage infectious or vascular complications of the neuropathic foot. We therefore believe that all diabetics with any kind of foot sore or infection should be seen by the vascular surgeon, even when pulses are palpable. An established relationship with the vascular surgeon is often the key to preventing limb amputation for patients with diabetes. Other patients who should be referred to the vascular surgeon include patients with aneurysms, patients with aortic dissections, and patients with hemispheric neurologic events and any carotid atherosclerosis. Lastly, when necessary, most vascular surgeons do perform major limb amputations, especially on patients whom they've established long-term relationships with. These operations, when performed thoroughly, and thoughtfully often maintain functionality after prosthetic rehabilitation. And remember, patients who succumb to amputation require close follow-up for vascular problems that occur to the other limb. I think in summary and in general, most vascular specialists agree that the stakes of a missed vascular diagnosis are so high that any patient with a suspected vascular problem should be referred for prompt consultation. This briefing is made possible through a grant from Cook Medical. To learn more about vascular disease, visit vascularweb.org.